I think for a lot of people, they don't realize that they are their brand in the beginning, right? Even if they come up with a fancy name and they come up with a cool logo and all that stuff, they're still the one that's making the first impressions. They're the ones face to face with the clients or virtually with the clients. They're the ones that the clients are going to see. There's the human element to the brand that I think a lot of people miss. So you have the personal brand and then you have your corporate brand or your business brand, your corporate identity. And I think those are two different things. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Million Dollar Secrets Show. Today, we are going to be talking all about branding. And I feel like this is a topic that is very broad. This is a topic that a lot of people think they know what to say in, uh, whenever it comes to branding uh, their business and what to do when it comes to branding their business. But today, I brought in an expert at this. One of my good friends, Adrian, is going to come on and talk about the importance of branding your business the right way. Adrian, are you in the room with us, my friend? Are you there? I am. How are you? Dude, I'm amazing. I'm so pumped to have you here with us. I'm really elated to talk about branding because it's something that I've been very passionate about along with marketing for a while. But I feel like it's a topic that a lot of people maybe misunderstand or maybe undervalue. So give, give everybody a quick little rundown about who you are, what you do, and why we should be talking about branding today. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, I'm Adrian Boisel. I own a creative agency called Adrian Agency. And branding is my specialty. For the last 15 years, I've worked with over 5,000 clients. I've done hundreds of rebrands, hundreds of logo projects. And uh, I, I love branding. Branding is like one of my favorite things that I do, um, along with consulting and marketing planning. But the branding side of things, I think, is the biggest area where people is their foundational foundational piece that people are missing. In their, in their tool bag. I think that a lot of people need more clarity around that and they have the wrong idea uh, around branding. So that's what I help do is I've created a couple different frameworks over the last decade called the Purpose Driven Branding Blueprint, where I've broken branding into kind of three fundamental pillars. And then within each of those pillars, I have essentially kind of my own um, pillars that go with inside that. So uh, branding is a really important part of any business. It's what's going to help differentiate you from everybody else. It's that first impression. It is that tone of voice. It is, there's so many things. What I talk about when it comes to branding is sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste all back to your senses, right? How somebody perceives you, how they talk about you, the stories that they tell about you, how you made them feel. These are all elements to having a really good brand. And I'm just excited to get into a conversation to be able to talk about it all. Yeah, man. And this is something, so a lot of our audience here, they are online entrepreneurs. Maybe coaches, mm -hmm. consultants, speakers, maybe some of them are just in direct sales, right? Yeah. So a lot of times when people start their business, they think the first thing they should do is create a logo, create a website. What's your thoughts on that? Like whenever somebody's creating a business, I'm just picking your brain here. Somebody yeah. wants to start their new online business. Is that the first thing they should do or not? What? How important is branding at the beginning of somebody's entrepreneurial journey? Well, I think for a lot of people, they don't realize that they are their brand in the beginning, right? Even if they come up with a fancy name and they come up with a cool logo and all that stuff, they're still the one that's making the first impressions. They're the ones face to face with the clients or virtually with the clients. They're the ones that the clients are going to see. There's the human element to the brand that I think a lot of people miss. So you have the personal brand and then you have your corporate brand or your business brand, your corporate identity. And I think those are two different things for me the way that I've been able to differentiate myself in the marketplace is by telling my story, right? Your mess is your right. message. You hear all these people going out there and saying that, and it's true, your story, where you come from, your voids, your values, all these elements are what make you unique in your brand. Nobody has the background and the upbringing that I have. Nobody had the abusive household and the broken home and the grandfather that died in front of them. Like nobody has the specific storyline that I have, right? So I think being able to take those elements and being able to understand how each of those elements impacted you personally, where those voids happen, right? The traumas or voids and using those voids and, and traumas to actually create your values. Dr. John D. Martini talks about this a lot as your voids or your values. So being able to take your brand. Wait, and say, take, say that one more time. Your your voids are your your values. Your say, voids that again, are your say that again and go a little bit deeper into that. 
So when it comes to your voids, right? I grew up in a household where it was very abusive. Uh, my grandfather and my grandmother raised me at a very young age and my grandfather died right in front of me because of alcoholism. Wow. And then I went to go live with my dad. And then from living with my dad and being in a really abusive physical, mental, verbal, all the abuse you can think of to then being on the streets as a kid at 16 years old, living on park benches, eating raviolis cold out of a can, like all those things, right? Because of that, I've never been an alcohol person, hardly touched alcohol throughout my entire life. It's always been an area of just avoided because I just know the family history. That's a value for me is alcohol isn't going to add anything to my life. I'm not really missing out. I don't really enjoy it that much to begin with. So I've just kept away from it. Helping kids that are on the streets that come from broken homes that come from abusive homes. That is what I've been spending the last 15 years of my life helping people. So these are the voids that I've had in my life that have become the values. And so these are the values, whether it's teaching somebody how to be an entrepreneur that is a dropout from high school like I was. Uh, and not by choice, but teaching somebody how to make money with design without going to college. These are all voids that I had that I had to learn how to overcome. And I've taken those obstacles, those challenges, those roadblocks out of my life and use those as foundational things to step to, to lift up rather than to bring me down. I've used those to step those are my platforms, essentially, to be able to elevate and get to the different places of my career that I have. And I've stacked each of these challenges that I've overcome. I've stacked them. And now I'm, I'm at a place in my career where I just, if I looked back at myself 20 years ago to who I am today, I would have never imagined I'd be here today, especially on this podcast. It's crazy, dude. Dude, that is so deep. Voids to value. And so the question, I guess I would ask anybody listening to this, what, what voids, what things have you had in the past that could be stepping stones for your success? And when it goes to building your brand, right? So that's really good. Really, really good. I don't even know if you remember where you left off from that point. So I don't know. Of so I'll let you continue yeah. on, on that path there. So one of my values is mentorship. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it hadn't been for the mentors that came in and, and took me under their wing and showed me some of the ways of, of being an adult. You know, I was 16 years old on the streets. I didn't really know much about being an adult other than watching my dad and my stepmom and some family members go through life very sloppily and make a lot of mistakes. So I didn't really know what it looked like to have healthy relationships, healthy marriages, healthy work relationships, like all those different areas. So having a mentor was a huge area that is a value for me that was not just a void, but it was an area that I didn't have my whole child go childhood growing up. And then when I became an adult, I found this mentor to take me under their wing. And then the second piece is my grit and tenacity. I've always had that because of my abusive household. I just, I'm kind of fearless that way. I'm more fearful now than I've probably ever been in my life just because I have a four-year-old daughter and I got a lot more to lose and people and teams and stuff. But when I was young, 18, 19 years old, there was nothing that could stop me. I was invincible. I thought I was going to live forever. And you know what I mean? Like I could eat whatever I wanted. So I had this grit to me that just made me chase and take risks that most people, especially grown adults that have families and children are afraid to take, take the risk on themselves, take the risk on a business, whatever that is. And so most people aren't willing to step out of that comfort zone. So that was a huge part for me. And then the last one I think was my drive to learn and become the best version of myself. I say all the time, entrepreneurship is the best, best path to self-improvement. And I think that all the lessons, the mistakes that I made along my entrepreneurial journey, you either get bitter or you get better, right? Right. Each of these things made me a lot better. And I learned from them and I've repeated many of them on occasions, just like, oh, different circumstances, but same situation. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing that same thing again, right? And you have to have that self-awareness or have the mentor or have a coach. And so because of all those, I've chased after my education and educating myself in these different areas and what I call skill stacking. So now I've skill stacked, started with doing graphic design, then I went to sales, then I went to video production, then I went to marketing, then I went to marketing consulting, then I went to web design and SEO. And I just started stacking skill on top of skill on top of skill and getting really good at all these things. And in the process, I found the areas that I had the most passion for. And that was branding, for teaching, for training, for video, for, for you know logo design, all that fun stuff. So I've been able to take all of this and just dive deep into myself be a lifelong learner, have good mentors, you know, um, have that grit and tenacity and perseverance when those challenges come your way. And I would say those are the main things, the values that I have is just showing up and, and giving it your hundred percent. Love it, man. And I, I want you guys to know this dude, he has a really genuine heart. I've, I've been following you dude for a few years now, and it's just cool to see how you've grown. He's helping lots of people and his agency is really thriving. So it's cool to see, but 
you know, I, I really want to just hit on just the importance, everything you just said, right? The importance of using those voids, those things. And I know we talked about it briefly before, but just when it comes to building the story brand, right? You've probably read the story brand book, right? If you guys haven't, you probably, yeah. should, you probably get, should. It's a really good book, but the story brand is really important. So this is a question I have. This is transitioning a little bit for you. Um, one, well, I got so many questions for you, dude. Okay, let's just go with this one. Ruin right now, we're going to live in a world where the attention span is like a goldfish, right? Or even worse than a goldfish for most people. Like our average attention span is probably just a couple seconds. So how does a business owner, how does an online entrepreneur really set themselves apart from their competition in the online world where it's cluttered, right? Everybody's doing TikToks. Everybody's trying to optimize and get their name out there. How do you, how, what do you think is the best way for people? Is it just being authentic? Is it just creating content daily? Is it having that particular look and brand feel, right? What would you say to people that are just trying to stick out in a, in a cluttered mess of social media? Well, the first pillar for this to me is the story, right? Your story is the one thing that nobody else has. And people are fascinated by stories. Look how big the movie industry is. They make billions and billions and billions of dollars, probably trillions of dollars in, a, in a, an economy where they don't really solve any problem other than entertainment, right? So we know that story is a no brainer, right? Story brand, right? That whole training and that whole SB7 framework is all based off of storytelling, right? You were supposed to be the guide, not the hero in the journey. The people that you're helping along the way, you're their guide and showing them the different pitfalls and the different opportunities and the different things that you've learned, being able to share that experience basically as a mentor, the most success that I've had in my career, whether it's in branding or marketing strategy has always been when I'm, when I'm documenting my journey and then telling them the different steps and the pieces that I've learned along the way. And that is not just a brand and marketing strategy, but a sales strategy. When I'm telling a customer, Hey, you know, I had this guy that came to me that was a veteran. And I just really love veterans. My grandfather was a veteran and he was just struggling. He bought the smog shop and he was getting like three or four smogs a week. And he just didn't know what to do. So he came and he's like, man, I need your help. Like, please help me. I was like, well, this is a simple answer. Let's just build you a landing page and we'll drive some ads to it. And so we started, we built a landing page and one day made another ad campaign the same week, launched that campaign. And he went from doing four or five smogs a week to 30 smogs a day. And he had over $40,000 a month coming in. That business is still doing that same volume today. Here we are six years later. He's still a client of mine. And I have it's using the same exact landing page I was using six years ago. Never even changed it. Same coupon, same landing page, same ad campaign. And the cost of my ad campaign has only gone down. Was it was it that he just didn't have exposure or you started telling a different story? He had no visibility and we started telling a different story. Because it was called AA Smog before and we rebranded it to All American Smog Station. And so he had this red, white, and blue. With, I mean, I literally redid the whole brand for him and gave him all veteran owned and operated two bays like they treat every customer as like their family like they're part of their right. just, that's how the military right. is it's very family oriented so when i tell that story to somebody they're like wow that's amazing could you do that for me and i'm like yeah of course i could do that for you what would that cost see i'm pulling the rope versus pushing the rope a lot of people that are trying to build brands are like you should do this and you should do that they're on TikTok and social media try this and try that what right about just tell a story that is the way that you're going to actually be able to captivate and hold people's attention a lot longer, especially if you tell it the right way. It's it's the easiest thing to do. And then inside of that, you can say your values, your wins, your struggles, your pains. People are going to connect more with the pains than they are with the the big wins. Yeah, man, dude, that's powerful. And that's that's an amazing success story for you guys, too. That's that's pretty phenomenal. So people they're wanting, they're like, hey, how, how do I Adrian, dude, sounds easy but it's not right. So how do you go yeah. about building? Like what's, what's a story? Do you have a story framework? Like, should they start off by telling their story, somebody else's story? What would you give? I do. Yeah. My, my purpose driven want branding, to start building their story. My purpose driven, driven branding framework is uh, nine blocks and they story niche and image. And inside of the story, you have your why, right? Which is where everybody, if you've read the book, Simon Sinek's book, start with why that's a great place to start and to kind of really get a competent, understanding of that. And I take clients through that whole process of really getting deep about their why, like, why is it that you're doing insurance or why is it that you're doing online marketing or why, where, where is this coming from and getting to the root, to the heart of the issue or the challenge or the why, once I'm able to do that, then I go into the, to the what, 
as a, well, okay, so what is it you're going to do? What is it you're going to solve? How are you going to solve this? And once I'm able to understand the what, the why, and the how, then I have a lot of clarity about how I tell my story that's going to move people from, hey, I started off as a self-taught high school dropout graphic designer, just working from a laptop to a seven-figure agency owner that's now speaking all over the country and soon the world working on two books, right? Like total transition from the streets to the stage, right? You can, you can tell that whole journey when you understand your why all the way down to the what and the how. And then once I have that, I get into the, to the niche. Now I'm going, okay, who do I want to help most in the world? All right, well, let's look at the, where I have the most experience. At-risk youth, high school dropouts, people who are good with design and creatives, people who are very entrepreneurial and want to do something and not work for somebody, right? That was my thing. My, one of my highest values is freedom. I love having freedom. I can't feel like I'm in a box or trapped in a nine to I'm five. Like, way, just just I'd rather be broken on the streets than be in a job making, making somebody else rich with my skills and talents. It's just how I'm wired. So now I'm, I'm talking about, okay, who, who is my tribe? These are the types of people that they are. They're between the ages of 18 and 35, and they are somehow in the online marketing world, or they're somehow in the legal space, like whatever that niche is that I'm going after. And they care about social impact. They're not just in it for the money, but it's not about state of mind. It's just about the state of heart first. And so I'm able to identify that. And then I go, okay, well, what are their needs? And I get really deep into their pains. You know, they're, they're only making 14, 15 bucks an hour because they're competing with people on Fiverr or they're, you know, charging per hour instead of charging for flat rate. They're leaving a bunch of money on the table. And they're, you know, one of the lines I use now as part of my story is I'm going to teach you something that I do that makes me a thousand dollars an hour that you're doing for free right now. And they're like, I'm sorry, what would you say? I make a thousand dollars an hour for something that you give away for free right now. That's, they're like, um, okay, I'm listening, right? They're leaning in. And so these are different pain points that I've identified in my own journey that I can now see in other people's journeys and talk about those. And then the last piece to the niche is who are they not? Who are the people that I want to repel? Because sometimes good, bad, bad PR is actually good PR. And if you're out there speaking your truth, think about how many people are pissed off by Grant Cardone or Gary V or Tony Robbins, and he's a chauvinist or Alex Ramosi or Andrew Tate, like all these people that are super polarizing. They, they repel people, not just attract people. And I think this is an important piece to learn is what are the values of those people that you want to talk about? Who is, because what it is at the end of the day, whether it's in marketing or branding is you want to have an identity shift for somebody. Somebody that's never done digital marketing before needs to have an understanding and a foundation of what it's like to do digital marketing. So you have to create an identity shift and give them that foundation. You have to move them from one place to the other. So what are you doing in your niche to move that person from one place to the other attracting and repelling. Hey, you're probably the kind of person that likes to show up and be early. And, and you're, you believe that early is on time. You're not the kind of person that shows up and feels like you can just roll in whatever you want. And your time is the most valuable. And, you know, you're just going to stay for a couple minutes and take advantage of whatever little gold nuggets and then leave and, you know, maybe grab some people's business cards and just try to use this as a money-making opportunity. You're more of the type of person that really wants to build connections and that wants relationships and feels lonely in your journey, right? Like see, being able to have that identity shift and take people through that, who they are and who they're not is a really, really big piece. And then the last piece to go through it quickly is your logo, your mission, um, and then your your values, your core values and, and understanding those in the last pillar. And that's literally the process that I take people through in my blueprint. And I go really deep in each of those. And it can take anywhere from two to six hours to do that process for me. Dude, that is awesome. So many valuable gems. Hope you guys are finding yeah. value in this. If you are, drop a comment below for Adrian. Hit the like button. Let him know. But yeah, this is so, so crazy when you're talking about identity, identity shifts, right? Helping people shift into a new dimension. What we teach a lot of times with our virtual events. So I'm, I'm big in the virtual event space is that virtual events, right? Most of the time, the way we craft them are transformational experiences, right? How can we craft these to where they're transformational experiences for the people on the other side of the camera? And so a lot of that is helping them shift their identity. People come into the virtual event thinking and speaking one way, but how can we use these events, which is similar to what you're talking about, right? How can you use your brand to transform people and help them become somebody new? And so there's a lot of things you guys can be thinking about here. A lot of things you guys can be implementing. He's giving you the frameworks. He's giving you the blueprints to brand your business to success.
So, dude, I'm, I'm kind of curious. This is just going back to your story. How did somebody yeah. and this is just me like just wanting to small chat for a second. How did somebody go from eating ravioli on a park bench? I think you said that right <laughs> out of a can to building an agency like you have now. Like, were you always creative? Were you always a marketer? Were you always building logos? Like, what was that? What was that yeah. shift? Was there an identity shift for yourself? Oh, 100 percent. Um, I think the identity shift happened when I stopped listening to the world and to all the other people outside and started listening to that small, quiet voice that I had inside of me from a really young age. It was like, you were, you were good, you were loved, you were talented, you were skilled. Like there was just this little thing that always kept me alive and kept me in that survival mode throughout all the challenges and traumas and everything that I went through as a kid that kept me going and kept me moving. And that seed was planted in me, I believe, by my grandfather, who was an entrepreneur, spent 28 years in the military, but then retired and started a video business. And I lived with him at the time and he planted that entrepreneurial spirit. And so I joke about this. I told a client today um, that I used to play business as a child. I didn't play house or any of those other games, hospital or doctor. I played business. Right. And so business was in my bones, is in my blood is who I am. My dad's an entrepreneur. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. I come from a whole family of entrepreneurs. And so I just naturally did that all throughout school. I was, I remember having a notebook drawing logos for kids. They're like, yeah, I'm going to start a band with my friends. I'm like, cool, drawing their logo for the band. I'm like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, you can use it. You just got to pay me five bucks. They're like, okay. Or I draw on their cars or I draw an, on an envelope that they were going to send to their mom. Or like, I was always an artist. And I remember my stepmom telling me when I was a kid, Adrian, I don't know what you're going to do when you grow up, but I know it's going to have something to do with computers and art. I don't know what, but it's going to have something to do with that. And I remember thinking about that going, huh, that's interesting. And she planted that seed when I was like eight years old, you know, seven or eight years old, really young. And so I was drawing my first pressure washing operation that I wanted to have because my dad had a pressure washing business at the time. And then I was raking leaves and, you know, washing people's cars in their driveways and just always had that, that drive to solve problems, make money and generate income. And the entrepreneur in me just grew as time went on. I just become, became more and more of my value and who I am. And so when I was on the streets, I had that artistic ability and I was talking to my little brother and he was like, dude, have you ever heard of Photoshop? Cause I was messing around in paint. And I was like, no, what's Photoshop? So he tells me about it and he's six years younger than me at the time. And I'm like 16. So he was like 10 years old. And he's like, you should check it out. So I check out Photoshop and I'm like, whoa. And it was, it was the first time I was able to take my ideas, the visual ideas that I have in my head and put them on to a digital like document, right? I could take my dad's vision for his business and translate it to what, what I saw onto uh, a Photoshop document. And so I started doing that. And as time went on, I got better and better. And I started doing my own events and flyers for nightclubs and bars. And that's how I met my mentor. And then once I met my mentor, he was like, dude, you got a knack for this. You can, I'll pay you 30 bucks a flyer. And I'm like, cool. And at that time, I didn't realize how low and how little money that was, but I got to sharpen my axe and I got paid right. to sharpen my axe. And it was a decent income because I was doing a lot of them. And then I started doing printing and making money on the printing. And then one day he comes to me and he's like, dude, honestly, your skills and design added with the printing, like this is what you should be doing, man. Give this nightlife stuff up, nightclub stuff up. Just go all in on that. And I'm like, this guy's smart. He's successful. I think I'm going to take his advice here. and I'm going to go all in. So I handed my nightlife promotion business, was called Defiant, off to my friend Natalie and said, I'm out and started doing my business that I have basically today, doing graphic design and, and, uh, and printing stuff. And that exploded. I mean, within, within three years, I had over 2000 clients. I think I had almost 3000 clients at that point. Wow. That's um, amazing, and it just dude. exploded in growth. And I was like, all right, well, this is obviously my calling. And I had a lot of fun. I, I went from doing just graphic design and printing to doing signage, to doing vehicle lettering, to doing vehicle wraps, to doing banners. Next thing you know, I added a web designer into my company and I just started stacking these skills like I talked about before. And next thing you know, I'm like selling that company in 2011 and going, OK, well, now what do I want to do? I've done all this stuff. I've learned all these skills. What can I do next? And that's when I was like, I just really want my freedom. I don't want to be tied to a location. I'm going to go do consulting and teach and do graphics and just be freelance. And so I did freelance consulting and, and design for companies. And that's where kind of the next trajectory of my career took off. And I had new mentors that really taught me the science of marketing and everything that I'm doing today. Amazing, dude. And I, I want to go back and talk about sharpening the axe, right? That's what you did. You're talking about you're building 
those nightclub flyers, but you were doing it. It was so cheap at the time where right? you look back and you're like, yeah. man, I was making pennies, but pennies. that was sharpening the axe. And I often tell people, find a way to add value to others, even if that means for free or little money at the beginning. That was how I started out actually with um, what we do now in, in the event industry was just adding value to my coach at the time, my mentor, almost identical to you, man. Um, he's a real estate coach and we came together, pretty much bartered services. He coached me real estate. I was uh, helping him with his digital marketing and it helped me improve. I was able to practice building out funnels. For some of you guys that are like, what's a funnel? We'll talk about that in another video. But we're uh, building out his funnels, building out graphics, right? Running his events. And it was that sharpening the ax there, putting in that season of work for free that led me to six figure relationships, seven figure relationships that I wouldn't have had if I didn't add value at the beginning. So if you're here and you relate to Adrian and you're like, man, I'm, I'm kind of in that situation right now. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to figure out, flip that switch. Maybe find somebody you can add value to in your space. Find somebody you can add value to and uh, latch onto them and just make it to where you are in or you are super, super, um, rare commodity to them, right? Something that you can really, really feel proud about as well on your end. Um, because not only do you want them to be proud, but you want yourself to be proud as well of the work you're doing. So it's a, it's a mutual relationship, but I just want to hit on that, man. Sharpening the ax is well, you just said system. something that's so important, bro. You said something that like, if there's anything they've taken from everything that we've said so far is the giver mentality, Bob Berg's book, go giver that giver mentality is how I've gotten to where I am today. I just show up and I give to people. I literally do not expect anything in return. When I showed up to do those flyers, he offered to start paying me. And I was like, cool. He's like, how much? And I'm like, I don't know, 30 bucks. Take me like three hours. It's like 10 bucks an hour, or whatever. Right. I just showed up and it was just there to serve, there to give. And the givers are the ones that really win in the long term. There's a lot of people out there like, how can I get from this person? And how can they help me? And how can I take the, the takers? You have to come with the napkin, not the bib. One of my mentors taught me that. I thought that was a really good analogy. A lot of people are walking around with bibs on and they just want to take from people when you should really be the servant and have the napkin over your arm oh like the God. butler. How can I just be here to serve you? How can I add value to your life? Like you said, what problems do I see that I'm like, oh, I have a skill set. I could actually help them. And whether you help them for free for a month, for six months, like I've been working with digital marketer now for the last six months. And the president of that company came to me and was like, dude, I love your content. It's awesome. We should do something together. I'm like, cool. How can I support you? And he's like, I think we should just do a podcast episode together. Started with a podcast episode. Sure, I'll show up and do a podcast episode with you. And then, then he was like, well, would you be interested in doing an AMA and giving some advice to our community? I'm like, sure. Then I did an AMA. And he's like, man, that was really good. Would you be open to coming to our event, speaking on stage? I'm like, man, that's going to be expensive. The travel and the flight and the room. I'm like, sure. I'm like, and I called up my buddy Kasim, who wrote this book, You versus Google. And I'm like, bro, should I do this? And he's like, I'm like, how was digital marketer, you know, in your life? And he's like, bro, it was one of the most impactful things that changed my whole life. And I'm like, all right. He's like, don't even charge them. Just get in the in the good boys, you know, in the in their club, in the circle with them. He's like, they'll pay you, but don't even charge them. Just go out there and and make the investment into them. Just give to them. And I'm like, cool. That's just how I am naturally. So I'm as long as you give me your word that it's a worthwhile relationship to pursue, I'm all in. He's like, yep. So I show up and I do the digital marketing talk. Then they're like, hey, we want you to write some articles. I'm like, cool. And we write some articles. They're like, hey, we want you to come to our mastermind. I'm like, dude. And now <laughs> since that's happened, I've generated about 30, no more than that. Yeah, about $36,000 in revenue in the last six that's months. That's crazy. That just because he's giving, just because you're giving. And so that's powerful. That's, dude, we align on a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm so pumped and excited we're having this conversation because I, I really do think we are, our, our mental mind waves are on the same same frequencies so but dude i, I love it because there's a lot of people though i don't ever want people to undersell themselves either though there's a fine line right there's a fine line of giving but then there's a point also at your time where your time becomes valuable right a lot of people talk about and this is a big topic right now a lot of people say time is money but actually time is way more valuable than money right um, so just realize as you grow and as you build those skills, as you hone in on your craft, there may be a time when you, your time becomes super valuable, right? Never stop giving, never stop adding value, but just re re remember as you get better at your craft, as you increase your capacity, 
um, don't undersell yourself. So I just want to you throw that in there. Time, there's, there's time, like, yeah, your time is the most valuable thing that you have. It's every hour, every minute, every second. This moment is the most valuable moment that I have is what we are doing right now, what we're wearing, what you're wearing. It's literally like art. Like there's never going to be another existence of this moment for all eternity, for all creation, infinity. This is the, the rare and unique moment. So living in the moment and not future pacing or living in the past, that's what a lot of people are doing, is the way that you can fully show up and be your most authentic self. And I think that is the key to a really great brand is just showing up and being you putting it all, all out on the table. And if they don't like it, then that's on them. It's whatever they see that they don't like about you. That's just a reflection of something that they're working through. And so that's the place that I've gotten to in my career was like, I'm just going to show up and be me. If somebody doesn't like something about me, I'm too Christian or I'm too much of a of an entrepreneur or I talk too fast. Like there are a lot of people that love Russell Brunson and he talks really fast, right? Think about how big his name is. There's people that talk really slow or there's, there's people that like Dan Pena. I shouldn't even be saying his name because he's so terrible. But there are people like Dan Pena, and I'm talking about him because he's so polarizing and he's so abrasive and rude and just downright mean to people that it makes people talk about him. So just show up and he doesn't care what anybody says about him. He just shows up and he's his most authentic self. And so if that's if you're a Dan Pena, then go be Dan Pena. Right. But if you, no one is going to be a carbon copy of him, you have to be your own person. And I think that's the really the big key here is like the accumulation of all the people that I've met and all the things that I've done have created who I am today. I'm not right. just me. I am the accumulation of you and all my mentors and all the people that have done me wrong. Like all those things have created who I am today. And, and there's a lot of beauty in that. So just embrace it and lean into it. Yeah. And so that's where I actually was going to go next. There's people who are like, okay, dude, like sounds good. We've been talking about stories, but how do you, how do you get confident enough to just be you online in a world full of critics, a world full of naysayers and people that are just literally on social media, right? We run ads. You're, you're familiar with this. People could comment on your Facebook ads for no reason. You suck. Oh, you know, like, how do you push past you that? Go. How do you get to a point to where you are comfortable being yourself online? I had this like little Gary V voice because I'm like the biggest Gary V fan, but I think some of the stuff he says is really powerful and he spends zero time worrying about his competitors, zero time worried about his haters. If you don't have haters, you're probably not doing something right. I have people bashing me on Reddit about me being a terrible designer. Well, I've won 12 awards. I've generated millions and millions of dollars for my designs. I have clients that have told me for years that I'm the best designer they've ever worked with and that nobody does it like me. So it's like, do I listen to that guy over there that's tearing me up and telling me I'm a terrible designer? Or do I listen to the results and the lives that I've changed? Like what's, what's more important? Like why give any of that my time or my energy? Just put your head down focus on what your mission is, focus on what your why is, focus on what your goals are and how you're going to serve yourself and others at the same time. And that's like everything else is out there is just noise. Like just stay focused and just be true to who you are. No matter what anybody says, your family, your friends, your significant others, like you know who you are. You just got to be honest with yourself and show up authentically. And I think that's a big one. I just wrote about this showing up and being honest with yourself. A lot of people are not honest with themselves and they tell themselves lies and well, I'm not able to do this and there's no way I could run a business or there's no way I could get to that point. And, and they, that's the scarcity or the lack mentality when they should be standing in their power, standing in their abundance and and just being the person that they said they want to be and showing up and doing it, you know? You're going to love that. And I, and I even go maybe sometimes a step further and I, I ask people whenever um, they ask the same question that I asked you just a second ago of like, how do I do that? Is I ask, I tell them like, Think about the people who are on the other end of you succeeding or not moving forward, right? Look at the people who need what you have. Look at people who um, hang in the balance of you telling your story or not telling your story because there's people out there that need your service, whether it's graphic designing, whether it's uh, being a health coach, whether it's, I don't know, maybe selling ice, right? We'll just come up with something random. Somebody needs you. And if you don't share your story, if you don't be who God's called you to be, what's going to happen to those people, right? And so if you're struggling with sharing your story and you're struggling with being your true self online, I ask, I tell yourself and I tell other people, I say, hey, quit being selfish. This may sound really bad, but quit being selfish and start thinking about the people who need what you have. Think about the people who are on the other end of the rope um, who just are waiting for you to pull them up with you. So does that make sense? 
hundred percent. All the entrepreneurs that I know and the ones that are the most successful all have that. I'm here to serve the world. I'm here to make the world a better place. I'm here. And if you don't truly believe that, if you're not walking that out and saying, I'm here to make every single person I come in contact's life just a little bit better, whether it's just smiling at them, giving them a hug, giving them some advice, you know, buying them lunch, buying a lunch for the person in the car. Behind you. Like if you're not living and walking it out that way, you're not living a, a fulfilled life that you really could be living. And I think this mentality has driven me to be attracted to organizations like Arte Syndicate. I'm pretty sure you and I became connected because of the Arte Syndicate, right? I actually think it was maybe through um, Billion, Billion Dollar, Dollar Brotherhood, Brotherhood. possibly. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I, I've also went to some of Andy and um, Ed's events. So, yeah. So the Billion Dollar Brotherhood, I think, is a is a really good organization. And you obviously Nicholas is a big time serving type of person. And so when you have that type of mentality, you're just going out there and serving people. It really gives you a different context to look at, look at life and, and business and, and people from. And so I'm just showing up there being the creator archetype that I am and being the rebel archetype that I am and just showing up and trying to serve and love on people as authentically as I can. And so that's, that's a big part. I think that you and I have vibed in and where our uh, uh, attitudes are. I met a guy that was in the um, Arte syndicate and because I'm drawn to that group and inside of the Arte syndicate, there's a guy named Matt McDonald who had an HVAC company. He came to me and he's like, dude, I've tried this company and that company and I'm really struggling and I really need help and uh, I don't know what to do. So we started doing ads and SEO for his HVAC business that he had just started off on his own. And in that business now, he's doing about $270,000 a month off of five grand a month in SEO. So you it's do, crazy. You, you figure crazy. if I was to go out and be like, well, you know, I'm just not really you know, confident in going out and doing SEO for people yet, or I don't have enough belief. And like the fact that I'm not standing in my power of like, Hey, I know what I'm doing and I'm here to help you and I'm here to serve you. How can I answer your questions? And let me help you get rid of, I, I didn't, I met with him for free. didn't charge him a dime, which I normally charge everybody else for consulting. Right. I met with him for free because he was part of my community, part of my tribe. And I was like, let me just see how I can help this guy. And that led to a bigger relationship where I did a brand for him, did this advertising campaign. Right. And so if I hadn't have done that, his employees wouldn't have been affected the way they've been affected. His company wouldn't be doing millions of dollars a month. Like, think about all the impact that that would have made by me making one decision not to just meet with this guy for free. Right. So you really rob somebody else of the opportunity by not going out there and just showing up and be your authentic self. Dude, couldn't have said it any better. Couldn't have said it any better, man. So let's let's and take this to a, a smooth landing here. There's people that are wanting to get better at branding, marketing. What are some of the resources that you would recommend for online entrepreneurs to really take their branding to the next level? They're like, hey, I'm ready to rebrand. I'm ready to revamp, or maybe I'm just ready to get my brand off the ground. What are some resources you would direct people to to really help them get off the ground? Well, that's uh, that's a good question. It's um, a challenging one because everybody's so different, right? There's, there's not like a one size fits all, but there are some foundational elements that every business owner, every entrepreneur needs to have. And I had them here on my desk. They've been here for like the last week and I don't know what happened to them. I think somebody took them, but one of them is the ultimate sales machine by Chet Holmes. If you haven't read the original or the new revised version by his daughter, Amanda, um, Chet Holmes was incredible. He's one of the best business minds that we've ever had. Um, so that's a game changing book for you. Um, there's a book called Contagious, which is also really powerful. Uh, a guy named Jonah Berger. He's a professor at the Wharton School of Business. Why Things Catch On. I love that book. Um, and then there's another one called Traction by Gino Wickman, which is the Entrepreneur Operating System yeah, like Manual, that essentially. Like that and that book is a game changer. If you don't understand the different pillars that are within your business and where you fit in, whether you're a visionary or an integrator, you got to get your hands on that. And then the last one that we've already mentioned here is the story brand. That book is a total game changer um, for anything related to branding and positioning your story and all that stuff. So those are the main ones I would say. And then there's online stuff, you know, just follow, follow some people on YouTube. Um, Chris Doe is amazing with branding. My stuff on YouTube is awesome with branding. I yeah, talk plug, a lot your, about plug branding. yourself, man. Where can people find you at? Just look me up on uh, on YouTube, Adrian Boisel, A D R I A N, and then he has B -O -Y. some amazing videos, by the way, and a pretty decent, solid following as well. So go go hit his subscribe button as well. Yeah, we got uh, I think almost seventeen thousand on one, and like seventeen thousand on another channel. So 
It's doing awesome. pretty good there. Awesome. I've learned a lot and grown and uh, I've leveraged YouTube as a search engine and as a lead generation machine, unlike what I ever thought was was going to be possible. I just did it because I wanted to share all my knowledge and just give it all away and see what happens as, as a lot of you know people talk about. So it's it's gone well. And I, I literally share everything I've ever talked about, everything I've ever learned. I've pretty much shared on my YouTube channel at this point. I love it, man. Well, guys, listen, yeah. everybody put in the comments below. Thank you. Go ahead and follow, subscribe to Adrian and his channel. Um, Adrian, dude, thank you so much for just being on here and adding value. Literally did not have to take time out of his week to do this. He's super busy. He's traveling, speaking. He's working on scaling his agency, but he came to add value to you guys. So my man, thank you so much for being on here. Much love. I appreciate it. And guys, listen, we do these every single week. So you know the drill. We talk about it all the time. Hit the like button below. Hit subscribe um, because we have so many other mind-blowing episodes just like this one that are going to help take your online business to the next level. Each one of them are filled with million dollar gems. I'm being serious. Gems that one single piece of information you implement in your life and in your business could change an entire trajectory for you. So guys, make sure you're tuning in every single week right here, every Monday for the million dollar secrets show. We appreciate you, Adrian, my man. Thank you again. We'll see you guys in the next video. God bless. Chat soon. Uh -huh.